I have money. I can pay you. Oh. Wait. Is that where we're going? I mean, that place looks amazing. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the very last of our masks show. We've been spending, uh, except for last week, we had off. Uh, family was in town, did the whole Disneyland thing. It was pretty awesome. But uh, we've been making this mask for the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. And uh, this is where we are so far. I'll give it a nice, quickie, quick look. Um, we've got the eyebrows added, the little ridge here. I got my mic volume up a little bit more for the combat last week because sometimes I can step away from it a little bit much. And then, you know, the back side of it looks like like this so far. I've this, These scorch marks are just from burning a little bit of the edges and stuff. But thanks for joining me, Shiraz, and letting me know you're there. So we're going to get right to it. Um, I'm going to put a layer down of, um, I've got an old, from all my old paint days and uh, mask projects. It's just kind of cool. I actually nail it to the wall when I'm not using it because it just makes for some pretty cool stuff there. So I was thinking I was going to start off with a... Uh, burnt sienna there for the base because it is awfully uh dark on the edges there and i'm thinking i might want to rock with that and then brush on the gold or i could do the opposite but i'm, I'm gonna go with the uh sienna for right now put a pretty healthy amount in here and we'll just have kind of a brown base and hopefully these uh, i'm gonna put a pretty thin layer on this it dries pretty fast so i won't have to worry about too much on the way of um, um, drying and waiting for waiting for things to go down. The only problem is sometimes these brushes have a little bit of a, uh, the hairs and stuff like that can come off. But this way we're going to have a nice uh, base that we can build off of, brush on some more gold and such. And as you can see, it's Definitely kind of in that same category. I have a lot of paints and I pulled them out of storage because I haven't done many art projects real recently. It's been over a year since my last mask and about, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks, month, no, more like months, almost a year since I painted last. So um, the really good quality paints, lo and behold, are lasting and the cheapy ones aren't. So this brush is a little bit in the middle category. It's leaving a lot of little extra hairs and stuff, but this is just a real quick uh, base coat here. What's neat too with this kind of artwork is we notice there's a lot of merging and play of light off of the gold. So like I guess I'm just putting down a thin layer to get rid of all this white we've been looking at for two or three weeks now. We'll just uh, get, a, get a nice layer down and uh, go from there. I added a little bit of work I just was looking at it and I was like you know what I don't want to have a whole nother show where I'm tweaking stuff and we have to wait for it to dry so I took this edge out a lot harder to match the angle here the eyes I've adjusted um, I actually filled them in a little bit more but like I said the first time you got to be careful not to um, mirror something exactly uh, why well because you're going to be wearing this, and you need safety when you're out. don't want to be crossing a street. And I mean, there's worse ways to die, right? <laughs> Sorry, I haven't looked at the thing uh, oh, underwater last week. This week, I have the man flu. Man, everybody's going down. All right, so we'll put this here like this, and we'll just keep smearing this on. I'm just trying to not have this goop anywhere. And uh, when you hear me tap it in like that, it's just trying to get rid of all these little white areas and such so when this is all done the only steps i'm not going to show you is just like a clear coat acrylic that you can get in a spray can once it's all dry and i'm really happy with it put a little zap of that on there and you get a nice it's not a shine but it just kind of seals in the paint makes it outlive anybody watching this unless you're watching this in about 100 years and maybe 
Maybe I'll outlive this mask. These are made of pretty tough stuff, so I'm not quite sure. That's why we'll put down a really fat coat. We'll do our typical commercial goodies. Come back, like a couple minutes is gonna help, but you never know, I'll clean the brush. I'll start adding on some gold, and then the last step, we'll probably just be adding some dark shadows, that little area around the ridge. Um, we'll go We'll go from there. I like to get pretty, pretty loose and fast with this uh, paint, just, you know, using a pretty fat, it's almost like a makeup brush. We've got a lot of surface area to cover, so I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm using the best quality paint and the color match that I can get. It's tough because you think of the Gary mask, you think gold. And you look at it, and there's the accents are gold, but most of the underside is like a orange bronze or something. So I think burnt sienna. That to sound like Bob Ross. Oh, this is what I'm using. If anybody really wants, it's called raw sienna. And this, don't let this color fool you. <laughs> it's been like sun faded. Not that it was in the sun, which is kind of weird. Um, and I'm not using any water. It's just mostly to clean off the brush. So I'm going to dip and dab here. I'll get this going. I'm going to make sure I get the, the lip of it. And what I'm going to do also, I don't think I'll do it today, but just so you know, you know, this, this white behind the mask, like what's holding on to your face, or we'll be holding on to my or my son's face when we're at Halloween time. Um, that's kind of unsightly. So it's nice to go just get some black covered in there so it's just not the focus because white can pull a lot of focus and such so and you know when somebody's looking behind you you don't want to have them see uh what do you call it? just white there so i'm just gonna fill this in on the back side just to, just the horns here i'm just gonna call them the horns and uh fast and loose man there's no i mean Try painting like this, right? Unless you're uh, Jackson Pollock, it's going to be a pretty fat chance you're able to pull off anything that resembles art. But we're just trying to get down colors. So I'm going to get up in these corners here. Sorry, i got to keep switching the camera up so you can kind of see what we're doing here. Just filling in any, any place I see white. And you can see it's already ticky-tack dry where we started. Just, and I hold it up to the light, make sure if there's a clump of paint or something that's just a little too thick in one area. I am um, quick to remedy that. I'll get some on the edge here. And these little symbols and weird stuff, that'll probably be the, like the very last step. Oftentimes, too, I mix mediums a lot. Like sometimes I've, I'll use an old Sharpie sometimes if it blurs in with the paint and you can get some a lot more accurate lines. Last fine. The color never fades and it merges with the paint. Very cool. All right. And you'll see if you look real close, there's, there is a bit of a crack here. But that's just from one layer that just didn't set right. Maybe the water when it was uh, drying pulled it apart. But it's, it's definitely, this thing's all one piece. There's no, it's not going anywhere is what I'm trying to say. But in a perfect world, I was hoping it would have none of those show up. But just like tectonic plates on the earth it's gonna stuff's gonna move around and stuff so actually i should probably coat that black just the uh, edge of it just so it doesn't affect the mask because if i i mean i won't be attacking it this quickly as far as uh, the brush speed but um might be good to show you at least the beginning of that process let me make sure just in case people see the back side of the horns they're at least a similar color with the mask all these little details are what really make it stand out. Anybody can go to a store and get some plastic crap mask and stuff, but put a lot of love and care into this and you tweak it over the weeks and it's going to stand up to a lot, of, a lot of eyeballs in the future. So, in fact, we showed the uh, local game shop, Team Deluxe, me and my son Aaron, we got second and third in the local draft. I, just missed first had a real good time but we showed them our uh, the process that's up on facebook right now of where the gary mask was when this show started and so maybe we'll have a a halloween draft and we can wear this and get a big uh what's this like a big 
We'll just bring a bunch of pillows and maybe have some gray outfit. Looks like I'm going to have to make another mask if I really want to match that outfit, right? <laughs> Disruption. Hey, thank you for that compliment, man. Yeah, it's a long process. It's been about, it's been about three weeks. I should take moments and give the... Uh, I'm trying to get the angle just right. And then the camera racks focus, which is helpful sometimes and sucks other times. But yeah, we're just, uh, we're just filling some, filling some goods in here. I'm going to poke it here and try to just get the mouth going here. It almost gives it a brushed bronze, which is what I was going for anyway. This part of it's a little bit boring. We're just laying down the main coats and the first few masks I made, I, I really regretted uh, not doing the steps I'm doing now. Like, I would just do this front, and then, you know, a couple weeks later, um, somebody wears it, looks at it, whatever, and you look at it, and you're like, oh, man, I could have just wrapped that color around the outside edge. It cost all of about 10 cents of paint, but you live and learn. I wonder how close I can get this up to the screen, because you can see a lot of the brush hairs are actually, I'm not quite sure if you can see that. And I was a little worried last week with, um, I'm just going to get in the mouth here, make sure that we got a little smaller brush this time. And then I'm going to get up in the nostrils just so I want to look up a gray merchant's nose and see white. That would be unnatural. And what I really like to do around the eyes and um, the nose, sometimes the mouth, is I actually get a candle or a match. Just a light burning when I'm done, and then I merge it with the paint. And if you notice, just everywhere there's a hole on the face, you're going to have you know those kind of natural lines. That one I will clean because that's more of a fine-tuned brush. But um, <coughs> excuse me, this plant's growing quite large now. We got this plant that's behind me not too long ago, and boy, that thing is really taken off. So I'm going to just set this down because my hand's getting really sore. I don't mind if I get the table a little bit of paint on it. I'm just going to go a little crazy here. Um, you know what? I'm going to actually just paint around here and here. Getting them from the inside out. If you look at a lot of my masks, they have this pattern after I've built some. Just that last layer of illusion. Somebody gets a you know, they look at your eyes, they look real close, and this way, anything they can potentially see is going to have, um, you want good quality paint too. Um, oftentimes too, I'll put like some, some canvas wrap there if, if the paint is a f smells a little like too toxic or something like that. It's kind of rare, but with the good stuff, you got to keep moving. Little fights in the house. All right. Hey, hey. Very cool. So I'm going to be moving here. Tell you what, it's pretty cool working for Disney now because my uh, whole family get, gets in free at the park as long as I'm with them. So, pretty nice perk. That was a, about a thousand dollars saved. <laughs> These parks are not cheap. The experience is just about everything. If you want, if you're in California and you want to go to a good adventure park i would not recommend disneyland it's got some good rides but it's mostly for like that vibe the experience the the mood right but um six flags that's that place is like for adventure seekers and stuff that's some more my style i really liked it I went there with my brother and one of the i might have mentioned this a long time ago when i maybe when i first did it but be a pretty cheap guy as far as you know i don't want to spend money i mean i'm in a popper right duh but um one of the best bits of money i've ever spent bits nothing it was a lot it was uh, one of those really outrageously high priced fast passes at at uh, magic i think it was six flags magic mountain and it's like an extra almost 200 dollars. but we were so tired of riding we just go right to the front right to the front and then they let you do it again if you want to, and it's just, it's too much almost. It's like this just caffeinated adrenaline just shove out. And uh, we were, by noon, we got there at like, I don't know, park open at like 8. By noon, we were tired of riding roller coasters. 
that's pretty hard to get get to that point so money very well spent especially i'm sure you've all done that where you end up you get to that curve of the line and it's like only one hour from this point and you're like my goodness if we do ride three more rides that's going to be our day and then you start doing the math and you're like you know what for as few times as people usually go to those parks it's money sometimes it's good to kind of splurge and do that so all right i think we got a pretty good base coat let me set this down here and let that water up so we've got this is kind of like just the base color we're going for here you can see well we'll define the cheeks i, I rose those up um, with a little bit extra and the eyebrows and this ridge to match this ridge but that was about the only things i did off camera and then on the back side here we've got you know just Behind the thing, like I said, I'm probably going to cover, this is all going to be black, which, you know what, we should be doing that right now. I'll do that because the more this part settles, the better. So water's getting a little muddy here. We're still going to use the same big fat brush. And you know, it's got some uh, leftover paint in it, and I'm fine with that. Now black might not be available. <laughs> got to... This one has not been opened in a long time, so it might be pretty... Yeah, sorry for the weird audio there. Yeah, so acrylic paint is what I'm using, and it's it's a nice sealant just by itself. And you thought it was easy before. I'm just going to... I'm just going to cover this like this, and it's okay if we up there you know i might want to switch brushes here i'm just trying to get as much surface area as i can right now imagine you know this is this is the mask so I'm just going to kind of come up to the edge nobody's really going to be seeing this part of it but still i want to not ruin the illusion black the great concealer let's see you notice i elevated this picture here it's about a foot off the table so hopefully we don't have to print it again of course this is the last show so i was teasing my wife earlier i was just like yeah this is typical me three weeks into this project and now i figure out how to set everything up for the last show and there's a lot of moving parts cameras equipment weird stuff let me get this going here this on here we'll be back next week barring any sort of weird life circumstances with uh probably a i've been really on crypt gift a lot and i uh, made an adjustment to it i'm not sure if it's good or bad we'll see we'll discuss we'll do all that good stuff but we'll be back to playing some cards the digital persuasion this has been a nice little reprieve of how the show usually goes though so and hopefully y'all like it we uh yeah, so I went to Popper Classic Tuesdays. They had Tuesday off, and uh, I was had a real close loss to Familiars, which I usually have a pretty good matchup against. That was frustrating. Lost a real close game three, and then of course being in the losers bracket, I faced Mono Black, which is the deck's worst option, and lost. And then I dropped, but then I didn't drop in time, so it says I went 0-3, but it was really 0-2 drop. I was like, hey, what's going on? But Arctic Ghost was the host, quick to inform me. I was like, yep, this, I didn't officially drop. I, I let him know I was dropping. But anyway, just so you know, if you do it verbally, sometimes it'll rack up another thing. So we're just, again, this will be like, imagine you're wearing a black hood with this, and we'll, we'll be going like that. So sorry you're under the weather, Shiraz. I second that. It seems like the whole world is. I've My brother's a bit in the medical field, and... He's, him and I are both kind of like shaking our heads because he's my informant, but this whole corona thing's so overblown. He's, uh, I'm sure there's people that are pretty ill. I'm not saying that. I'm not looking for somebody to be outraged. I'm just, as far as uh, ailments go and stuff, it's pretty low, and it's like the media and people in my business are sure making the most out of trying to scare the crap out of the public when it's really just kind of a version of the flu. I've heard some reports saying, like, relax, everybody's going to get it. It's just like the flu or the sniffles or whatever. It's just if you're really old or in 
some sort of state of being jacked up, and you got to watch out because just like anything else, you're more susceptible for it to be the, the ultimate. So, But I'm not sure why our friends in Italy got hit so fast and hard. That'll be interesting to see uh, if anything comes there. I'm going to be a little lax with the masks here. And, you know, honestly, I think this black that I'm using is, is closer to just a almost a thick plastic paint at this point it's it's really setting up i don't think in another year i'd be able to use it so i wish they would last longer i keep them out of the sun and that but sure pay for what you get oh i'm just gonna keep the layer here keep the illusion up and just because we've got it we've got the side mask done we've got this side mask done i'll put a little bit more up here Get rid of all this offending white. And it's cool. I found this old chain. So while I'm displaying it, you know, it kind of feels like there's sort of a slave motif with the, they're always carrying something. And this is, this will go good where we set those holes on the first show. And uh, I'll display it on the wall when we're not wearing it at Halloween time. Sorry, I'm not looking disruption. I uh, also 100% agree. I'm not quite sure about what, but thank you for that. As we look on the side here, I'm just going to, so let's see, kind of big area there. I'm just looking for areas I can really clump, and just fill in. Sloppy part of the process right now. I'm just, just putting paint on a pig sort of thing. There we go. Rolling around, looking for weak spots. I <laughs> took a shower this morning. Maybe that was a bad idea. Maybe I should have waited. This is a messy process, but we're getting in there. We missed a little bit of, of that, but that's fine. We'll, we'll go back over it. But see, I thought I, I was so diligent. And look, it's like you go around the edge and then boop, white spot. It's like, darn it. But I don't want to hit that with black. So I'm going to let that do its thing there. This is pretty set up here. And go in with the little bits of black and just do the little stuff that Little kids will see if they look up at the mask and they'll be like, hey, you missed a spot. That way I can say, no, I didn't. It's spring break time here in the States. My oldest is on his way here. So next week I'll have to wake him up and say, get out of your room. I got to do the show. Would have been convenient if it fell on these other weeks because he could be sleeping in there right now. But he's not even here right now, so... Get going this going here. Gonna get. All right. I think it's okay to touch the outside there. And I'm just a little bit of white. It's probably where I touched off. I'll go like here. You can see it's pretty. Uh, you don't have to be bashful with a brush with uh, masks. Painting, yeah, every stroke's got to kind of mean something here. This is just a lot of covering. And so that's why I was saying when I first started this process, it was for, I think it was for one of my kids, some Halloween thing, and the mask wasn't available. So I looked into making them, and I, like I said, I've been addicted ever since. It's a really cool little just hobby to get into. Very, very addictive. So you can see the edge of the mask on the top there. In here I should be showing you guys a little bit more I'm sorry it's tough to so you can see like if, if I'm on the side of you and you know I've got a hood on or whatever it's gonna gonna look pretty deluxe we'll see oh yep ticky tack paint I gotta that's why I use that sealer because my fingers are taking this black stuff off that's what I was talking about with um I think we're done with layering that but uh the black is definitely more of like a a plastic feel to it right now and uh, I gotta I gotta make sure to let that hit I'll do another pass on it the last minute once my hands are clean off camera and uh, you know one last little touch up touch up here touch up there and then you take that spray about I don't know foot foot or two away and just really light and it just seals it in if there's any um, I don't know impurities in the air see this stuff's already dry here and I'm gonna get rid of the little brush hairs but you know what just like wrinkles just like moles or freckles little impurities are really what make art I think um, some of the only art I don't like is when it's way too structured way too mathematical and and uh, set in stones other things so 
All right. Well, uh, it's going to be a quick break. Let me get a um, another brush here and see. Oh my goodness! Huh. Check this out. <laughs> it's like a rat started eating this brush, but that's exactly what I need. Something to just throw away because I've got too much built up in there. So I'm just gonna. Okay, can that just come off? I think it can. Yeah. It's craziness. Well, I'm gonna have to use a different one. I'll use this one because I've got a little bit too much in the mouth area there. It's just not going to dry very fast or it's going to pool. And I don't want to have that happen. So I'm going to do that. Use the little extra and just tiny little white spots. And we'll be back after a pretty quick break, guys. I'm just going to wash my hands and be back in just a few. The category is arts and entertainment. And it's not Jackie Chan. Um, is it... The guy from Cheers? Uh, Kelsey Grammer. Not even close. Edgar Allan Poe. Why did you get one right? It's not Jackie Chan. The award-winning new trivia challenge from Cinco Games. Speed round. Name ten things that aren't Jackie Chan. Toothpaste. Pizza. Lamps. Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> the leech-ridden swamps of Agadim. Cast off all your inhibition at the only casino in all Dominar. Experience the pinnacle of personal pleasure. Venture boldly at Rakdos Casino and may all your underworld dreams come true. Rakdos Casino, the place for premium pleasures. And we're back. All right, so we've got this going on. I've got some variety of paints. I spent a little bit. Actually, I spent more than a draft cost on these, these th three pigments, not knowing how many of my old paints would go to hold, would hold up. But I've also got some, oh wait, no, these are the, these are the really old ones. Hear that? Paint shouldn't sound like that. They should sound like that. Nice, thick, not separated. So I don't know what kind of mess we'd uncover if we open those up. Um, but anyway, so I got these three. This is the, uh, well, I got to put them at an angle here. We've got like a, a gold, a, a bronze gold, or no, a bronze gold, and then like kind of a shinier gold. Um, I think we're only going to need to use probably the, the shiny one because my existing supplies are pretty pretty cool. And I've got a gold here, so I'm going to wait to go over um, some of the edges here with, with uh, actually, you know what, I should probably just try to brush it on like this and because uh, you guys can see things a little bit better. So uh, actually, that, that would have been better if I could have maybe made the mask at about that angle, but oh well. All right, while you were away, I did this. Um, I'm just smearing. Now, if you look at the, the gold here, there's a, lot, there's a lot that's just kind of brushed on. So I'm going to look for the area, I, you know, with the biggest swath, which is, you know, and obviously, look, let's think about this. this I don't really, it's tough because I want it to look like this, but I also know that this is shadow in the, in the photography here. The light source is here. So I'm going to use this as the mirror side. To uh, you know, to go off off the top there, and um, there's not much along the way there. It's gonna kind of let it let it smear here. And go off. It's kind of hard to paint at this angle. We got a lot on the eyebrow. We'll work on details later, but a lot of times too, it's kind of letting your brush go, and it'll fade into the existing color. 
I'm just trying to avoid any sort of clumps. We can cover up all the other stuff here pretty, pretty easily. Now in person, this is looking exactly like the color I wanted. It's just a little bright on the camera because of where I've got my, my light, but, uh, yeah, the light source is right above me. So it's a little, it's a little over pronounced here, but that's a definitely the gold. I'm, and this is the gold I'm looking for. This is strange how the, the gold on the nose is more on the side. You would think it would be on the crest of the nose, but I guess not. We'll try to keep this thing as about as natural esque as it does here. And we'll cover this area in with black. You're like, well, it's black their way. Not black, but you know, a darker color. But my experience, it's always good to not have any hard lines. Look at any sort of face or endeavor you got. It's not so much the uh, bronze background I'm looking for here. I'm just going to kind of coat the nose in all gold and then we'll go over and uh, merge kind of a shadow element there. Go from there. So yeah, if you ever start painting or whatever, it's always fun. Great hobby and a little expensive. Got to keep your paints uh, dry. So when I get to the edges like that, I don't want a hard edge like that because then you see the line. You never know. That might be the last time I, I hit there because it just feels good or it looks right. So I try to be as final as I can with the paint. That makes any sense. And where hard lines exist naturally, then, then you can leave something behind. But now, and then, you know, when you have a very little on the brush, it's nice to kind of merge it and keep, keep things rolling around and going like this. So anyway, sorry about the, uh, uh, what do you call the little glare there. I'll put this off to the side. I want to do a good show, but I also have to see what I'm doing, guys. So apologies if the angles aren't all I cracked up to be. I sure learned a lot doing this little project. My wife's going to be very happy to have the kitchen back in the morning hours. So big props to her for being the uh, propaganda night no one ever sees. Mm, yeah, this is really... You know, I mentioned Bob Ross a lot, and a lot of you tease me that sometimes I get a vibe, and it doesn't help that I'm painting. I'm sure the two, it's not that far of a stretch. But you talk about some happy mistakes. You could see this in person, the way this, this thing is coming together, the, just the shading of the bronze, burnt sienna with gold. It just looks very antiquities in a good way. Just a nice, nice, nice a galvanic brushing. How's that? Um, let's see. And again, we're gonna, it's gonna look a wee bit bright, uh, but we're going to also be keeping in mind that, you know, the last stage we're gonna be adding a lot of these shadows and stuff. So and don't be alarmed to see a lot of white on the black. It's um, probably gonna have to go back over that area. And uh, it's very, very hard edges here. So I want, I want this, uh, rise that we built this secluded step if you want to get mtg about it i want that to be very uh, pronounced difference so we're gonna put this up again i don't i'm gonna just kind of just keep fading 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 it's gonna let the natural contours of the mask do their thing so it's gonna look way better i wonder if i'm the only person that's designed this mask probably not maybe at this stage or, or level we'll see and we've got a lot more here i'm just going over the real obvious areas of gold and then we'll take a step back and revisit it and see how it feels there play on this light and shadow here there we go it's funny my brother super big horror fanatic he likes a lot of my masks in the past and when this was all white and i sent him a picture of it he thought it was the most terrifying thing he's ever seen <laughs> i was like really i guess it's just the eye of the beholder sort of thing because you know we're used to seeing gary and uh, he was like my goodness that thing is creeping me out so there's the bob ross we all know and love yeah another guy i've been i don't know if i mentioned it in the last few weeks but another guy i've been taking a kind of a 
deep dive. That's kind of the zeitgeist right now, saying that that phrase, deep dive. But actually, the eyes have a lot of gold on them. Um, is uh, Huell Hauser out here in California. He doesn't exist anymore. It's a nice way of saying he exited the earth a while back, but quite the uh, steward of California. and just has a very charming nature to him. He's got this uh, show called California's Gold. You can watch it on YouTube. Very cable access feeling, and but he's just got such a charm. And uh, some of his sayings and mannerisms, he just you kind of do a double take. You're like, what did he just say? And not in an offensive way, but just like, you know, like if I was doing this, he'd be like, so you're painting, huh? What's that like? And you're like, uh, you know, just these awkward questions where you're like, whoa, how do you answer that? Uh, well, Huel, uh, you know, we have a brush. A brush? That's fascinating. You know, he just does stuff like that. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> just kind of taken aback by Bit of a simpleton, at least on camera, but super, super charming. If you want to see what I'm talking about, the, the episode that bit me, I should have given Shiraz the link, but it's, see, his, his name was, his dad's name was Harold and his wife's name was Jewel, and so they put them together and called him Huel. So it's Huel Hauser and it's the Salton Sea, and oh my goodness, that is one of the weirdest, kind of creepy in a funny way episodes. If you if you want to give something about 20 minutes of your time and see if uh, you ever have a stressful day or you just kind of want to need something to kind of get you out of your funk, Huel's good medicine. Not all of the episodes are worthy, but they're pretty awesome. But yeah, the Salton Sea. Oh, man, that was a strange episode. Yeah, I'm just going real quick here. I'm just trying to not have any hard edges. We're just... I can show you up close. We're, uh, we're getting there. Anyway, <laughs> the chat should have got quiet. Maybe nobody likes Huel. Maybe it's just me. Let's see. We got a little bit more gold up here. See, I'm doing a very, very thin layer now that we've got the base down. That was a tough call. I, you know, my first and look at the mask. It's, you know, I think any human sees gold and you're like oh okay well gotta go gold and it's like no 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 no. look closer that's kind of a rust base almost in there you know I'll go like that i'll just keep this moving i'm just gonna kind of apply like a pretty pretty even coat to this stuff and just add a little bit now when we cut in those angles we're just gonna let the brush fill them not fill them in so these little um, designs and stuff. Don't want to fill them in with paint. We just kind of brush over them. What's neat too is if you miss, uh, or if you if you got paint on your brush, obviously, and you and you hit the edge, it tends to gather on the edge, which is exactly the the kind of uh, sheen that metal takes on, where, where the edges are a little more pronounced, and so you get a little bit more paint than you think, and you you come from the top down, smear it together, and voila. You've got instant antique. Let's see here. Now we've got some areas of gold. I don't want to neglect it too much, but I'm going to be real careful here to just going to put a streak there and a streak here to kind of accentuate that rise that kind of a little absent. Fading, rushing and fading. Just trying to get this all so there's no like, oh, well, that's where the paint ends. You know, you just kind of fade out, fade out, fade out, fade out. I reached diamond finally, says 710 V something, sorry. Oops, oh, shoot. Note to self, don't read chat because I just put it in the wrong paint, but that's all right. All about the happy mistakes here. Is that an arena term or? Finally got my young one on, I mean, MTG online. Had to build them decks and have it pretty ready to go. He's having a good time with that, but he's still 
I think the younger generation likes Arena. He was playing a draft the other day, and I was like, all right, well, now we can use your sideboard. To, and it was like, oh, no, nope, no sideboarding. Didn't have it set up. I'm just like, kiddo, that's two-thirds of the game. I'm like, you got to, there's a way to compete like that. That's just lame. You have one bad draw, and it counts as a loss. It's like, geez, you can't you can't redeem yourself with like another one. So I'm going to let, let the that burnt edge here just kind of hold the shadow. So it's same with around the cheekbone here. A little more pronounced. I'm going to just put in these slight dustings. I'm not putting much paint on the brush. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. And this is when you're really grateful for the material we use because it's like human skin or whatever. It just grabs where it wants to. And up close, you can get some really, really pretty looks in here. So just, I shouldn't have done that, but that's all right. Let's get this edge a little bit cleared up. Don't want to just do an even coat of gold. I mean, but like similar to that last layer. I mean, this is like the the second layer. So we're just really trying to get things looking like they're all one piece. Like this is just some cool bronze gold mask that we found in some ancient desert and some weird culture of the asphodial. I don't. I don't even know. They're a strange race, I tell you, but they like masks, and so I'm on their side. That's for sure. I'm getting in here, going like this. Spend a little more attention on the eyes. They are very gold. Look at them. That's probably the one area. If I was just doing this to not be worn, I would I would make these a little bit smaller. But like I said earlier, you gotta be very careful of safety. You don't wanna not see where you're going. Alright. That's set up. Just gonna get on the inside of the eyes here. Get a little gold panavision. <laughs> Again, once we apply that sealer. It's almost like a gold mascara at this point. You're just really trying to accentuate that. So I think we're good with the gold base here. Now that keep in mind that the gray merchant, the sun just came out and I've got the light on. Let me actually kill the light here. I'll be right back and see the light will adjust here real quick, but just a second here. looking a little bit more like the gray merchant because he's I've got a light source over here you can see my hand waving now I think I'm going to turn it back on because it helps me a little bit more but if I put this over and the light adjusts a little bit here we're getting closer but I think I need to keep the light on so that I can uh we can attack it with the uh the dark browns now so I've got a few options we got the watery option <laughs> and I've got this uh, burnt umber color and a raw umber which feels a lot thicker oh look at this our pencil sharpener a lot of times you need pencils on these is a is a uh, I should just throw this out up oh. Pencils are very good for mask making you sharpen them but this is like one of when the kids were younger this is a nose pencil sharpener How's that for a gray merchant, huh? Little, uh, <laughs> it's just a typical nose, but I didn't even realize. All right, I'm gonna turn on the light. I'm gonna roll on the commercial. We'll come back and hopefully we can uh, finish this bad boy up or at least resemble it and uh, call it a show. Anyway, guys, we'll be back, uh, I believe. Let's see, Tic Tac, yeah, Tic Tacs. New Tic Tacs with almonds. It tastes like chewing on a Christmas tree. It's nutty, minty goodness. Nine dentists love new Tic Tics with almonds. I wish it had root beer on the inside. It will. An extra new Tic Tics with almonds with root beer on the inside. <laughs> it tastes like chewing on a Christmas tree with root beer on the inside. I need butter on everything. Then you'll love new Tic Tics with butter. Now with half the fat. And coming soon, Tic Tics with cannabis. Not for smoking! Okay, guys, get back to work. 
Hey, all you Propaganda Knights! Want a great deal that also helps propaganda? Well, you're in luck! Visit FlipsideGaming.com for all your paper magic needs. Simply enter the code PROPAGANDA and get 10% off on all orders $10 or more. Plus, you'll help us too! Are you feeling bogged down or despondent? Has a friend or loved one noticed you look withered? Then Phyresius may be right for you. Phyresius is an all-natural Phyrexian supplement that can give you a different outlook on life. Do not take Phyresius while enchanted, equipped, or have shroud. Players taking Phyresius should not man vehicles for at least three turns. Avoid contact with humans or merfolk if you've had a recent gut shot or have had any interactions with the graveyard. In extreme cases, exile may occur. Ask your alchemist if Phyresius is right for you. Available at Morassa's Market. And this is not available at Morassa's Market, because there's only one of these that I know of. Okay, so hopefully we're going to get to a, a resemblance of this mask. What I want to do is um, attack just the, the dark browns and such, and we'll get it minus these details to the close stage. Then I'll start adding those, probably glance at it, and then we're going to call it a show. And then next week we'll have a normal show, and I'll have the mask all sealed maybe some fine tuning. I mean, we're talking like, I'm, I'm hitting it with a brush about as big as a fingernail. And uh, you can see the difference of what I might fine tune it, it with. It's gonna be more like pencil brushes and such. So um, yeah, it's another thing too. Don't, you know, this is just for looks. You only need like two brushes to, to make a mask work. And especially because it's a lot of merging of colors. And so um, all I did was take a uh, off, while I was rolling a commercial, I take a you know, paper towel and I pinch and squeeze and it's sure it has a little bit of gold in there. But you know what? All these things do too. So it's a, my chair is getting awfully loud. I'm on the edge of it. So it's like, what are you doing sitting on this incorrectly? So, oh, and then also, you know, if I need to scratch anything, I took a, a old brush that didn't have any tip on it. And that's, that makes for a nice little, if I need to scratch any details in it. So careful not to throw things out when it comes to that. So this is the big uh, drum roll as far as like what, what things are going to look like. Now I've got the good paint. I want to see how, give this a quick shake, even though it's pretty new. I got the umber. So I'm going to put it right next to the, uh, the burnt sienna that we had to see if, uh, and I chose on purpose, this is a, um, it's a, brown uh copper so it has a bit of a copper look to it um you know just to see if it's a it might be a, a two-tone thing like maybe I, I want copper around the the gold areas and then more of a darker black brown around the around the other edges but i just want to see it next to it and i actually think i'm i keep getting really lucky with this um let's see we've got some definite blotches up here so let's see if uh this is a definite thinner paint. I'll go like this. It's not showing up too much here. I'm not thinking I like that one too much. So I don't have an impurity. I'm gonna spread this out. I don't know, maybe it's working now. Yeah, I think it's working. Oh, we don't want these edges to set fast. You already tell the difference in quality. So this is more of a craft paint that I'm using right now. Nothing against crafts or craft stores, but you know, this is like for canvas art, which is usually most of the paints I have, but sometimes you get these weird colors, but it's having a really neat display. It's hard to show you, but it's adding a really nice bronze element. So I'm going to ditch this idea for the shadows, but I do like it up in the, uh, crevasses as people from the UK are fond of saying what are the other words that we always tangle on I always crack up when I watch a uh, bear grills on on TV I'm gonna kind of goop this a little bit I'm not after getting a lot of these things just right I'm just putting little little accent accent points because this is this is more of a highlighting color but anyway back to bear grills like he'll say crevasse instead of crevice i guess none's really right i just uh you get used to saying it the way your culture does and you hear it the other way it's like what and then um let's what are some other ones we've got um 
advertisement instead of advertisement. That's a pretty big change. Not too much uh, to say about that, just other than it's just a funny observation. I go after the nose here. This is a nice underside color for the nose. Again, you know, I applied it. Didn't quite work right there, so hey, we'll use it as an accent point. And when the brush almost has nothing on it, that's when I attack just really, really, really subtle strokes on other parts of it. So I can put a little ancient machismo on the edges of the mouth here. This is the only stuff that's probably going to be seen by a microscope. Or you never know, sometimes when you hang it on a wall and the lighting hits it just right, it can really show some love and care on a lot of these angles. So go from that. Just using up the good stuff. Again, there's a lot of, uh, what do you call, um, definition and weird stuff. So I'm actually okay kind of gooping this a little bit more than usual. It's also a less higher quality, less higher quality. Can I just say low quality uh, paint? And I actually think this the ridges here are, are really after it here. So I'm going to pull this down so that it has a nice organic, like it lives there sort of vibe. Get this going here. And any sort of impurities or screw ups, hey, just take a look in the mirror. No offense. Everybody, nobody's face is proportionate. Nobody's got anything. That's why I say it's just a very fun, happy mistake driven medium. You can have a lot of a lot of fun with it. So like this. And the nose turned out pretty cool. I'm actually gonna take a little more aggressive stance on the mouth here and just kind of Go around real quickly so there's a bit of a shadow play there very subtle and we'll make this line stand out a little bit more and a little bit of this a little bit of that it's getting there it's awfully bright in here but it's better than the shadow one because then it then I'm I'm not judging the right colors if I do it that way so Here. Really accent that edge that Little Fight was so concerned about shows ago. Rightfully so. Getting that hard cheek shadow. Match it on its other side over here. One of my favorite things about this mask that I've never done before. I've never done an um, offset. Meaning like if we look at the way the mask is when we hold it like this. So this is normally what I'm building off of, and it's so weird to just have a flat tabla rasa sort of thing. Pretty cool. Uh-oh. There I go again. Talking too much, and I just grabbed gold. I'm going to make sure to merge that with the things I'm really looking at. All right. I'm going to hit this header here with this. And it's mostly not because I see that color in there. I just want it's a little bit too much burnt sienna coming through there, and I want to merge it with something else the mask. So uh, we'll go from there. Put this in there. Nice little interplay on the shadow. It's funny. We're probably going to end up using all of this that I squirted out of this color that I wasn't too fond of, but the more I see it drying and interplay of the light, I think this might be a home run for the color I was looking for. You think at the mask and you you know, if you're only to use one color, then you'd probably use gold to get people to guess what mask you're, you're using. But it's a, uh, there's a lot of other elements to it. So it's been a fun one to uh, come see, come to life sort of thing. From the street, you can see up my son's bedroom window and he's got three of my creepiest masks displayed. And so I always wonder what the neighbors think of our house. Just like, that's kind of a, Weird family. It's better than being boring, I guess, right? Halloween comes, everybody knows where the good stuff's at. Of course, when they see me sporting my masks, a lot of the adults go across the street. They're like, no, 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 no. 
A little too real. I remember Little Fight's wife one long ago. We first started playing a lot online. I came out with, we were on Skype and I had one on and she just, we're talking, she was across the country. I remember she just ran out of the room and was like, that's messed up. I'm PG 13 ifying the phrasing she used, but she was, she was pretty, uh, pretty scared. You remember that little fight? That was pretty fun. Man, paint really brings that together. Thank you, sir. Yep. Trust in the process. But it's very good to try to catch structural issues where they're at. Okay, so that's, uh, we've got a bit of the bronzing there. And um, actually, you know what? I want to try something here. I'm going to try to do a screen grab so I've got a really good, um, uh, if I remember to print that. That's the second you do anything different. So we're still not done. We still need to add some dark areas but i've just got to be careful because i don't want to paint shadows in other words like when this when this thing naturally the way we built it it's gonna it's gonna follow those shadows but under the nose and a bit up here and stuff we're definitely going to want i'm saying the word definitely too much sorry about that we're def there i go again um we're gonna want to really police that and make sure we don't go overboard so we're gonna try that was a very cool color i'm gonna put that up here as our little like woohoo I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going with a, um, this is just burnt umber, and it's very old, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. But I like to put my paints pretty close together. You know, it feels like it's just built up in here, so maybe it's all solid. I'm not sure. Let's see if anything wants to come out, because, you know, paint is that way by nature. It's going to seal up, so I might have to, oh, yeah, that's pretty... That's pretty goopy in there. I don't think we're going to be able to use that. There's a lot of air pressure in there, like a vacuum tube. Yep, that's going to make. But I've got another one. Raw umber. Slightly different. Let's see if that wants to come out. No, it doesn't either. So when you're painting a lot, these are great buys. They're usually you get a lot of paint for the buck. But problem is um, you get uh, these, these tubes just aren't made to hold hold a lot of paint so um, now the blacks working fine so I'm gonna know to throw these ones out not the gold not the uh, paint I'll be right back I'm not gonna roll a commercial I just gotta uh, go revisit my paint supply I think we're probably gonna use this and hopefully it's a little bit oh no this is the really old one let's see what this looks like not that you guys can really see this too much but let's see if that yeah, that's just dripping out liquid style. But it's the perfect shade. I wonder. If you're doing one of these, it's cool to, um, especially your first time, take a piece of, you know, the, what we built, the, um, the stucco, I want to call it. I know that's the wrong word. And just let it harden just like the mask. And that way you can test the color on the actual material. See what it looks like instead of taking these very brave strokes that I'm about to take here. But I know I want under the nose to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to see. Uh, I think this is going to be pretty close. I've got some darks coming here. You know, I'm just not liking the uh, quality of this, though. It's just way too watery. I think it's sat too long. So it's the perfect tone, the perfect color. But what's neat is it's really bringing out a lot of impurities in a good way, like little wrinkles, cracks. So it looks like almost an antiquing of, um, of it. So I'm, I'm still going to use it. I'm just going to go along and kind of accentuate edges just real quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on, on this one, but make things stand out like the cheekbones and these hard lines. And then, you know, some of this merging here of the colors. I don't want there to be too hard of a line, so let me make sure to hit that there. So again, you know, we could bitch about the paint being a little too old in this this batch, or we could say, okay, well, what can we use it for, right? Similar to like a magic build. It's like, well, that card sucks, but if we pair it with this, all of a sudden, hey, that's kind of a good strategy, so. From there, that looks a little too rough. 
Put it in there. I'm just getting these little doohickeys, if that's a word. Is now. Here we go. My son wanted me to teach a class on ad libbing. <laughs> it's like, you can talk about nothing for two hours. How do you do that? It's like, ah, gift the gab. Too much theater as a kid. I don't know. I'm sure some of you out there are like, I wish he'd shut up. All right, I'm going to go try to find a brown that'll work. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right back. The mask will be staring at you in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Ah! The audio assault there. Yeah, this is a very high-end paint, but it's been sitting for about eight years. <laughs> All right, let's see what Sochi has to say. Check the bowl just came out better pronounced than I thought from the plaster stages. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry, reading backwards. Yeah, we're getting. It's getting there. Like I said, getting close. All right. Uh, my nose is a little bit bigger in the cast, so it's pretty hard to make it as flat as an artist can because when you paint something, you don't have to wear it. Fortunately, i got to wear this thing or my kid does. So I'm going to see how this turns out. I'm going to put it over here. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. You know, I'm a cheap guy, like I said earlier, so I like popper. But if you're, if you're looking to get into this long term, I'm, I'm revisiting an old box that has probably... 200 paints in it no joke each one's four dollars to like twenty dollars lo and behold every one that cost around twenty dollars and a lot of them were donated to me by really good artists like eric lutz um here it is eight years later comes out fine a little bit of a shake boom i'm sure there's a reason for that i can't tell you what it is but uh it's it's pretty impressive and it kind of gives me hope a lot of times i always think like there's a bit of a scam going on you know with um I just want to get this all in the brush with people just like implied value and such. I, you know what? Let me hit the under nose again. Yeah. See, this is, this is paint. This is coming. This is layering on and, and representing well. I'm going to go like here. Definite. A little too aggressive there. Let me take this out. I'll have to hit that area with gold a little bit more later. Just wanting to get the uh, shadow play here under the nose. This is going to be just right. Just got to make sure that I'm not doing it in the wrong area. A little goopy. We'll hit the eyes here. We have found our color. Now, I want to leave a bit of a hard line for the eyes there because there's definitely a bit of a play there. It's fine to use your finger if you overdo anything a little bit. I'm just wiping this down and trying to coalesce this look. this heat up heat up uh, dry up over here whenever you're doing a mask too it's always a lot darker on the eyes than you think it will be or it'll look a lot more natural if you do it that way it'll be uh so we're gonna 
be a little rough with these shadows keeping away from the, the main parts I'm gonna put a little bit on the nose here just so the mask matches the mask a little bit more there Put it down the ridge here and we're gonna re-hit it with a little bit of gold but again I'm just trying to let this play on light happen Get in there. Don't worry, we'll hit we'll hit this back with gold in a bit. I just want to get most of the, a lot of the shadow elements. Just want to get in there. I don't think anybody else is doing masks on Twitch. <laughs> Definitely cornered that market. I hope. an old rag here nerve-wracking painting on camera too because usually it's just a I'll come back to it another day and blah, blah. I'm just trying to like finish this one up like all in one go and I screw up or whatever. It's like, well, I got to fix that now. And I got to narrate. I got to do all kinds of stuff. So, and we're getting there, guys. It's getting there. I went a little too aggro there. It's okay. I'm going to really try to, I'm going to hit that with a little bit harder edge there. I'm going to imply that there's a uh, regress here that there isn't. Look at the mask. It's definitely more of a shelf there than we were able to really build. So I'm going to just wipe off the extra. Looking pretty cool. Looking pretty messy too. This is a neat two-tone effect, and I'm another Bob Ross thing. I'm really happy the way this is just bringing out the uh, shadows and a lot of the little designs we put in there. I was thinking of drawing this verbatim on the edges. I'm just kind of liking the way it's looking now. Making it my own, you know what I'm saying? Why not? From here. Oh, man. Tell you what, this isn't that heavy of a mask, but trying to paint, narrate, and uh, do that all at the same time. Hand gets tired. All right, we do have some uh, areas around here we can definitely darken up. That's the perfect amount on that brush. It's just a nice shadowing. Is that a word? Uh, kind of a redundant statement if you think about it. I said it, therefore. It's an incorrect word, maybe. I'm going to play some shadows up in here. A little too aggressive with that, so we'll wipe it off. Voila! Oh, darn it. I was hoping we were going to get away with uh, no obtrusions on the uh, original artwork, but there's our first victim. All righty. Oops, shoot. Again. Messed up. Okay, wipe it off. Nothing to worry about here. I didn't think I had that much on the brush. Gonna do this. In here. Let this. Uh, sorry, I'm mumbling. All right, we got some hard edges up here, so we'll just track them down. My poor wife's like, she usually does shopping or does something. She's right in the other room having to put up with all my narration. Good for her, she's got headphones on though. No specifics. It's gonna imply the line here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really 
finally come together. When I wish uh, I was local to a lot of you guys. Maybe I am. I don't know, but this is one of those not representing well on camera. Sure does look good, not to boast, but in real life, I'm over the moon with how this is turning out. Especially considering I've never done one live before, you know, it's like... So what I'm doing here is just dragging up the shadows. The mask might not do that, but life does. Uh, this, is, this is an edge, so I'm going to have a... It's looking very, very lived in so far. Again, these the the glares you're seeing off the gold especially is is uh well they're almost not here. It's just I have three halogen lights directly above me, so I'm getting my uh color information on a different scale, I guess is the easiest way to say that. I'm gonna put a oops. Need a little bit more of a line there. Put a line here, here, I'm gonna use our finger to just Really antiquate or antiquate, I meant to say antiquify. There we go. A little dabble in here because it doesn't make sense if there's brightness in the, the crotch of your eye area there. Sorry, I haven't even looked at the chat here. The happy little shadows, that's right. <laughs> How does it oxidize? Well, I'm just misspoke. That's me and my uh, diarrhea of the mouth. I just got to keep talking, man. Give me a little uh, space here to wiggle. Yeah, we got a bit going on in the chin here. Accentuate that lip. A lot of these paints do have metals in them, though, so there. I'm just going to very lightly brush those cheeks just so they're not so... It's such a harsh transition of gold. Same with the eyebrows here. I mean, just a tiny, there's almost nothing on this brush right now. So I'm just hitting areas where, again, just want to accent it. It's just adding decades of age. Just boop, just like that. Toning it down, toning it down. I don't want it to look like you just spray painted this thing, right? And that's what multiple layers will do. Give you that color where nobody can replicate it. Even us, with the same paints, tomorrow. Couldn't do it. Maybe somebody can. I can't. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. I think i um, getting pretty close. To, you know, the more I'm seeing this come together, the more it's feeling like the Gray Merchant. I was thinking we we're going to have to hit this with gold, but the more it's settling, it's like, talk about your happy mistakes. I'm full of them today. So we're going to fine-tune here. Just want to pronounce that edge a little bit before it sets in. And uh, you know, careful, I don't have any ticky tack stuff on my, my hands there. I'm looking, I'm really liking this so far. So I want to look for a brush that's got probably the hardest edge. We're still going to stay along these lines. I'm going to come down the mask here and Try to keep it the same width here. Let's settle these in here. These kind of just go nowhere, so I'm going to be uh, a wee bit. I think I'm going to drag these up. I'm trying to keep them like the same, about the same width. And keep in mind, I'm not going for the angle. I'm going for like a similar spacing. And they're talking to wherever they rotate. If that makes any sense. Sorry, it probably doesn't. Almost a strange tiger element, huh? <laughs> the edges here. I'm 
And here we go. Another one of those things. If I had a time machine, probably would have built this edge out. Maybe even a little bit more. You know, it looked a little too much, but when you try to replicate existing art, it's just kind of strange how it all all comes together. But got a pretty nice little line edge there. We'll do the same the other side. Here. Ha. Ah, happy little shadows. I like that. Be a good name for a channel. All right. Before this goops up too much, make sure my hands are remotely clean and it's going to take a little bit of that edge off. This is the There we go. Taking a few liberties artistically here. I'm not building up a double shelf on the uh, edge here. We're just, I'm just going to let this kind of dissipate and uh, see where it goes. And keep in mind, too, I would think the test of a mask is like if somebody can identify it. Pretty rare somebody's going to have a printed out picture all blown up exactly what it looks like, right? I think any magic player, if you should, wore this at a con or something, they're going to be like, hey, it's the such any such. Oh, after we go right up to the eye. Let these die die down. And we'll do the same over here. The last little thing. It's almost like a some sort of wraparound sort of vibe there. Do 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 getting there. All right. I'm going to do a few more little accent pieces, and then I'm going to set this to dry. I want to, since we've got the fine brush out here, we'll make sure we, we try to emulate a few of these lines, right? Pretty easy to paint when we already made the scratch groove and such, but I'm going to accentuate this a little bit of the shadow. I don't like how that turned out, so I'll just rub it out. I'm going to pull this down here. So be honest with me. Not that I have that much to to do with projects like this, but did you guys like this little break from gameplay? Or if you had enough masks for a few years, we're we talking um, maybe revisit it once a year. I was thinking we, went, we might be able to do this. I don't know. But I do know, I get a lot of very curious interest for it, but then I also notice that, you know, it's one of the our fewer viewed ones. So I think uh, it's just one of those switcheroo games, right? People are expecting uh, something. You're like, kind of come at them with a new bag of tricks, and they're like, hey, wait a minute. This is the one I signed up for. Don't be shy. I got pretty thick skin. I also got to remember to read the damn comments. Something I never do. Oop. I mean, while well, we've been here, because I'm trying to do this. Let's see. Mask is sweet, said Shiraz. Okay, well, that's one. Don't feel like you got to be on a bandwagon. I should rephrase it so I get more accurate responses. I should say, who's really excited for me to put the mask down and start brewing again? So, I wish you guys could see. It's such a good camera, but... Just taking a little bit of dark elements and just just playing on a little bit of shadows here. Very subtle. Real subtle stuff. Again, see how it's nice and black on the back side, so if you wear a black hood with it, it sells the illusion all the way around. It'd be good. Even if a little kid's looking up at Jesse. You got that 
I also thought playing random decks with your son was pretty great, though. Oh, thank you, Soshi. Yeah, it seemed anything on the tabletop didn't seem to uh, air too well. I think it's probably just a, it's not so much the show, I would hope. It's, it's that people don't see a digital game, and that's kind of what they came looking for. And so then they're like, oh, well, I'm moving on. I guess. Let's see those. I'm going to take a little bit of the shine off of these brows. Just a little bit. Cool, cool. Let me get the nose. Never fails. Sometimes I touch up old, old masks too because wear them out and about and you never know. You start seeing little chips and stuff like that. It's nice to make sure they're all pristine and perfect. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Let's see. There's a bit more under the lip here. Go like this. Again, we're just dissipating the edges. The shadows don't really have hard edges usually, so we're trying to. Um, let's see. We got here. Just more up here. Got more of a shadow play here. Bring those in a bit there. And we'll get some darker colors in here. A little bit too much of the uh, original paint that we started with was at the Burnt Sienna. So I'm just going to almost use no water today. A lot of times I'll add water to a mask. Something you might want to try too. I think I brought it up on a few of the other to the show or the uh, the stains that you can merge so if you're just kind of trying to wing it story of my life you just uh, add a little bit here add a little bit there keep scrubbing keep rubbing and you end up with a color that no one else can because it's just the stuff that you're using so it's pretty great all right guys well I'm gonna fine-tune this a tiny bit more off camera but I think we're at a pretty good stopping point for our uh, mask project. Let me kill the lights and see if I can get a little bit unshiny angle. Give me a sec. Let's see. Yeah. A little bit similar light pattern as I get closer though. Where's that light all coming from? It's uh, interesting. It's mostly come from behind me. I mean, I've got a Got a light source here, so that's what's causing a lot of these uh, these errors here. But um, so uh, actually, I'd probably make a better screen grab, wouldn't it? I'll go like, uh, let's see if I can get this down below here. Something like that. <laughs> a great man once said, "Even shadows have shadows." Yes, you could put on put this in the arts and crafts section, but then you miss the magic crowd. Yeah, that's true. Um, and it's very magic centric. So I'm really happy with where we're going to leave off here. Again, I'll, I'll do some real fine tuning stuff, see things settle down, uh, look at it in different lights and stuff like that. And then um, I'll just add that, that spray to the edges there. My fingers are all a mess here. But um, that's where we're going to leave off, guys. And so, uh, you know, obviously the Halloween show and stuff, we'll, we'll be wearing this and such. And I'm sure my youngest will too. But for now... I'm sitting in the dark, it looks like, but you can see the mask a little bit better. But anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. We'll be back, like I said, next week doing the uh, typical shows. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions about this in the future, feel free to email us at popperkan at gmail.com for uh, supplies and stuff like that. I'll try to put them in the chat if I remember. But um, yeah, we'll be that. Oh, all right. In the wise words of Bob Ross. And that's beauty. I can't wait to see it more, and says Disruption. Thank you for that compliment, sir. Yeah, it's uh, you got to be willing to kind of roll with the punches. There's, you know, I'm, I'm sure you could probably find a hundred errors with this if you looked for them, but, you know, it's supposed to fit a face. This guy was just drawing whatever looked cool. So, hey, Bob, again, do you uh, any cubing or battle box? I do not. Sorry, but, you know, my youngest is getting so bit by the magic bug, he might inherit Poppaganda eventually, and... Uh, do his own thing and I, I know he's he's really into uh commander right now and he's dabbling in pioneer and all kinds of other stuff so it's been a lot of fun i mean i 
I've never seen somebody get bit by the bug that bad. And it was funny because I pushed it on him, obviously being who I am and such. Uh, he's always seeing me play it, and it was just kind of dad's thing. And then uh, in the last year, he's really got bitten. So his birthday's next week, and we're it's pretty easy when you have, I'm sure. Another good reason to get your kids into it if you have kids is it makes for great, easy gifts. You're like, here's some cards, here's some binders, here's some whatever. So it's a... Uh, the relatives like it because they just give them a gift certificate to Card Kingdom or whatever, and it's all it's all good. But anyway, guys, uh, Chatterbox here is going to uh, shut his mouth for a little bit and try to uh, fine tune this a bit more. But um, hope you liked it. Um, hope you can kind of see it, and I got it close enough for you all to witness and such. But anyway, till next week, guys. I'll see you next time on Propaganda. Thanks for joining me. Attention, Propaganda Knights! Show your love of all things Papa with our ultra deluxe play mats. And true to our Papa roots, the glorious artwork is 100% free. I'm trying to give these guys everything they can get to me. That's it. it. Just send an email to propaganda at gmail.com with the subject one, two, or three, and we'll send you the playmat file for free. I gotta read it again because my mind is just a piece of shit this morning. All you need to do is visit our friends at inkgaming.com. Order yours today.